In today's video, I'll demonstrate how to correct the wide angle lens distortion in this photo. But first, let's be clear about what we mean by lens distortion, because we can break it into two types. The first is distortion caused by lens optics, while the other is convergence, which we'll return to shortly. When it comes to lens distortion, this is usually either a barrel or pincushion effect. With wide angle lenses, it's almost certainly due to be barrel distortion. Here the original image had a small amount of barrel distortion. I've already corrected it using DxO Photo Lab 7, but I can show you what it looks like using Viewpoint 4. At the top right of the interface, we see the distortion panel with two buttons. The Auto option applies an automatic correction to the image based on its metadata. If there isn't sufficient metadata, like in this image, we're then prompted to open the original image file. The other button gives access to sliders, where we can apply a manual correction to remove the barrel, pincushion and fisheye lens distortion. As this image has already been corrected, there isn't any lens distortion. But if I move the barrel distortion slider to the maximum value of 100, it creates a pincushion effect. Notice how this makes the image appear to gather into the centre. You can see it best on the edges of this building on the right of the frame. If I switch to correcting pincushion distortion, we introduce barrel distortion. Let's turn that panel off though, as this image is already fine. What we really need to correct in this image is the effect of the converging verticals. When you look at the buildings in this scene, they appear to converge inwards towards the top of the frame. Some people call this wide angle lens distortion, but it isn't. It's really caused by my camera pointing downwards when I took the shot, so the camera sensor isn't vertical. The reason I did this was to fit the buildings into the scene. The effect is also exaggerated by using a wide angle lens. For this image, I was using a Micro Four Thirds camera with an 8mm lens. That's the equivalent of a 16mm lens in full frame terms. In a moment, I'll show you ways to correct this convergence, but first I want to level the image. I can do this using the controls in the horizon panel on the right of the interface. This gives four options for leveling the image. The horizontal and vertical options allow me to place control lines on the image, which can then be used to align it. Alternatively, I can use the angle slider to manually rotate the image. But an easy option with many images is clicking the auto button. When I click this, the software analyzes the image and automatically rotates to level it. If it doesn't work, I can click it a second time to turn it off. When I captured this image, I was trying to get the tall building on the left side of the road looking vertical. I can therefore use the vertical alignment option to correct this. After clicking to activate the tool, I can position the line along the edge of the building. Notice this helpfully magnifies the area below the cursor as I move it into position, which makes it much easier to work with precision. Once in position, I can click the preview option to check how the correction looks. If I like it, I can then click the apply button to make the change. Now it's time to look at correcting the converging verticals in the image. To do this, we'll use the tools in the perspective panel. As with the horizon panel we just looked at, we have an auto option followed by several perspective tools we can use. Below these are then some sliders where we can apply manual corrections as well as refining our results from the other tools. When I click the auto button, the software will automatically remove the convergence. Sometimes this works well depending on what's in the image. If I click the button a second time, it turns the correction off. Now, instead of using this, I'll show you how to make the corrections manually. We'll use the two vertical lines perspective adjustment. This is useful when you just want to apply a converging verticals correction and you're happy with the rest of the image. When I click the icon, it places two vertical lines on the image. I can then drag these into position, aligning them with the buildings. I'll position the left line against the vertical of the tall building. That's the one I wanted to keep upright when I shot the image. I'll then place the second line against the building on the right side of the frame that I also want to appear vertical. When both lines are in position, I can click the preview button to see what the correction looks like. If I don't like it or I think it's out, I can then reposition the verticals and preview the change. 
When the correction looks good, I can then click the apply button to make the change. I should also mention that you can build up multiple changes using the apply buttons. The image now looks a lot better, except that the tall building I like so much is being stretched outside of the frame. This is where we can use the manual sliders to apply an additional adjustment. For this example, I'll use the HV ratio slider, moving it to the left to bring the top of the building back into the frame. My correction is now looking good, but I don't like how the top part of the building appears to be bloated and expanded. A great tool for fixing this is the new reshape option in viewpoint 4. I'll start by selecting a grid to work with. This adds a grid of nodes or points to the image. I can then select these points by clicking them with my mouse and then dragging them to reshape the building. Alternatively, I can click and drag with my mouse to select several points and adjust those together. Although I can drag these to reshape the building, I'm actually going to use my arrow keys on the keyboard. I can then nudge the nodes into a new position by pressing the keys for greater precision. Notice how this is now slimming down the top part of the building. I can then select the nodes on the other side of the building by clicking and dragging with my mouse again. I'll then press the left arrow key on my keyboard to move them into position. When I'm happy with the shape of the building, I can click the apply button to make the change. Now that I'm happy with my image, I'll click the save button and apply my changes. This then returns me to Photoshop where I've been using Viewpoint 4 as a plugin. If you don't have Photoshop, it's also possible to use Viewpoint 4 standalone. Now earlier I mentioned that I applied my lens corrections to this image using DxO Photo Lab. I did this by applying a series of adjustments that I applied to every image to ensure its quality. If you'd like to know more about these, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you soon for another video.